The Nazi concentration camps at their core was just a bunch of psychopaths of the most terrible kind who found use for their perverted fantasies, having under their power thousands of disenfranchised prisoners. With absolutely no rights, people of all stripes in Nazi uniforms could do whatever they pleased. Therefore, in addition to the usual conditions of detention of prisoners, which could not even be called even minimally humane, the guards also arranged all kinds of entertainment from which the blood runs cold even today. The Abuse of Little Prisoners The most terrible, of course, can be called the atrocities that the Nazis did against juvenile prisoners, who physically were not able to protect themselves or even understand what was happening. When the children began to cry from hunger, the Nazi guards, so they would not be irritated, simply killed them. Another, even more terrible entertainment was the murders in front of the mothers. The Nazis grabbed small children by the legs, spun them in the air, and beat their heads against a wall or a pillar with all their might. Many mothers died from what they saw, went crazy or completely turned gray. It was the norm that the population was driven into a territory fenced with wire. Children were taken away from their mothers, and right there, in front of their parents, they were taken by the legs and smashed against the walls of the house. The guards demonstratively punished those children who during the march or in some free time tried to steal something edible, beating them with a whip or truncheon. In one of the children's camp, many prisoners recalled an identified German woman. She was known as Frau Elsa, who entertained herself with starving children. As one of the former prisoners, Pyotr Fedorovich recalled, it happened that this Frau would come into the camp where the children were lying on the bunk, and she would say, Come, Kinda. If someone went with her, she would start having fun. I remember what happened to me. Here she stands, holding a mug of milk and giving it to me at a distance, teasing. I was moving to her being hungry, and a shepherd dog is behind me and jumping over me. I'm tumbling. I haven't drunk this milk. They said that the German woman was very amused this way, to such extent that when one of the kids stretched out in front of the spilled milk, he was knocked down by the shepherd dog, Frau Elsa graciously allowed to lick the milk from the ground. In another camp for women and children, the main entertainment of the cards was the siren. It could sound at any moment. After the start of the siren, children had to run to their mothers and then quickly return back. If a child did not have time to return, then the Nazis shot both him and his mother. In one of the children's concentration camp in Belarus, the Nazis came up with an entertainment called Harness. When they got drunk, they would gather the strongest one and put them in a cart. Then they sat down and whipped the kids to make them run faster. Children often were forced to sing while running. If one of the children fell or stumbled, then the drunken Nazis could beat him to death or shoot him right there on the spot. Another, perhaps the most terrible entertainment of the Nazis was a so-called walk. In order to understand the essence, it is necessary to know that, as a rule, children served as blood, plasma, and skin donors for wounded German soldiers and officers. Naturally, after numerous blood draws, the child quickly weakened. At some point, even German executioners in white coats realized that nothing more could be taken away from this kid. But, like any person, Children strove to survive and wanted to live. Therefore, they often asked the doctor's uncle or aunt not to send them to the gas chamber, but to give them a chance to gain strength in order to still be useful. And very often, uncle and aunts gave such permission, allowing the doomed child to walk so that he could rest a little. But the walk was allowed in a strictly defined direction. For example, in the Salaspils concentration camp, it was outwardly alone overgrown with green grass, which in fact masked the crematorium oven, where the fire was constantly burning. When a child walked across this lawn, at some point he fell down right into the roaring flames. This joke amused the executioners in white coats. Entertainment over the condemned and adult prisoners As for adult prisoners, here the number of sadistic entertainments of the Nazis is also almost unrealistic. The most harmless was when the guards, having chosen several people who they didn't like, gave the commands lie down or crawl. 
Moreover, the command had to be executed immediately, otherwise followed by a severe beating to death or execution. And the prisoners fell and crawled, either on water, or a broken glass, or in manure, or stones. And the guards standing nearby were having fun, often with filming what they saw. In the Kaltichovo concentration camp, Borinovichi district Belarus, prisoners sentenced to death before execution were forced to perform a kind of ritual, which was very amusing for the Nazis. For example, according to the memoirs of the surviving prisoner Yarmukovich, nooses were always ready on the famous Koltechov Og, on which at least 8,000 people were hanged. The sentence to death was forced to shout loudly during the day, for which he was sentenced to death. So Yarmukovich remembered a young man at the age of 16 who stood near an oak tree and shouted loudly, I ran away and they cut me up. When the young man no longer screamed but began to barely whisper, he was beaten with a club until he again began to loudly yell the same words. When the guards had enough fun, the unfortunate guy was hanged and his body was not removed as a warning to the rest for several more days. Today, hundreds of other entertainments of Nazi guards and wardens are known. For example, about the hobbies of some in making lampshades and leather goods from tattooed and often plain leather that was stripped from prisoners. The infamous Frau lampshade, Ilse Koch, was fond of it. Also, some Nazi craftsmen even set up the production of furniture from human bones in their free time from work. The well-known and one of the most terrible executioners Irm agrees, for the sake of entertainment, starved her dogs for several days, and then set them on the prisoners, watching with laughter how hungry animals gnawed the unfortunate prisoners alive. Marie Mandel, another Nazi female devil, specially organized an orchestra from female prisoners, which created new prisoners, arriving at the camp with solemn music. Among the guards of the Jewish ghettos, one of the most popular entertainments was the so-called raids. Drunken Nazis flew into the barracks with the help of the flashlights, chose the girls they liked the most, and often immediately began to rape them on the spot. If it turned out that the girl was a virgin, then the guards called their colleagues on the new body so that they could get special pleasure. As for prisoners of war, here the scope of bullying was simply monstrous. According to official data, prisoners of war in concentration camps were not fed for several days and then they were transferred to the territory of dead animals. The Nazis were amused by this. Prisoners of war were often used for even more creepy entertainment. Stripped to their underwear, emaciated prisoners were sent barefoot to run through the minefield. The Nazis made bets, each on their own runner, who would win the competition by running the most. Boxing and sports teams this, on the one hand, was a monstrous entertainment, and on the other hand, oddly enough, it has also become a symbol of the resistance of the prisoners to the Nazis. The concentration camp guards, in order to hone their hand-to-hand -hand combat skills, began to select the strongest prisoners for so-called boxing matches. This entertainment has gained such popularity that it was even approved personally by Hitler. The main idea of such fights was to demonstrate the superiority of the Aryan over non-Aryans. Obviously, the victory over the exhausted and hungry prisoner could not be considered something outstanding. However, quite often, professional Nazi boxers clashed with professional wrestlers, boxers and athletes who not only did not lose, but even defeated the guards. Later, the idea of fights was transformed by the Nazis into special tournaments organized between prisoners of different teams, which the Nazis formed on their own. Winning a fight meant life, losing meant a gas chamber. It should be noted that the guards provided their athletes with enhanced rations so that the prisoner would last the maximum possible number of fights. However, even victory did not guarantee life. Often the camp authorities, enraged by the invincibility of the athlete, simply gave the order to execute him. In fact, any entertainment of a prisoners always contained the possibility of death, regardless of whether the guards were satisfied or not. And even though a concentration camp often was disguised as a labor and correctional camp, it was originally intended for only one thing – the mass extermination of people.